Good morning, everyone. The Lord be with you. It's good to be together. That's a beautiful morning, and uh, we're here to worship the Lord. And I did promise a few weeks ago that I'm not going to make endless uh, COVID related announcements, but we do have to make announcements regarding it, okay? Just so our conduct in this building is uh, exceptionally important to one another, particularly since uh, in the past month we've gone from being one of the best places in the world to live. Uh, regarding COVID, the, one of the worst in Europe. So we need to be very, very cautious and very mindful of the needs of others. Uh, most of the precautions are to do with looking after other people, including uh, the mask. The mask is not required, uh, and that is not compulsory, but it is highly, highly, highly recommended that you wear one unless you have been uh, advised uh, on the matter of exemption. I would ask that you don't just make it a matter of choice that you're a wee bit uncomfortable, so uh, please bear in mind that uh, one or two people have become rather anxious about other people not uh, wearing masks, so could you please just bear that in mind, the anxieties and the needs of those uh, near to us. I don't want to sound as if I'm rebuking, because I'm not, because there are times I've been in the house, and I'm half, half an hour in the house, and I'm like, oh, Jupiter forgot to wash my hands, or whatever, so that we're all having to uh, remember these things as we go along, so if you could come and then as we move in and out of church. Thank you. You're the best of the four churches regarding being here 15 minutes in advance, and that's great. Uh, and I thank you for that. It gives time uh, to get in and settle down. Similarly, on the way out of church, I would ask that uh, you just are uh, aware of people who are moving and heading you through the exit over here. I'm asking today that select vestry members stay behind for five minutes. Okay? Uh, at the most, because I'd be out of the lake, so we can't get through a uh, long window. It's just uh, one issue that I want to bring up with you that just requires a nod, but I'd like the nod. If you, if you agree with me, I'd like the wee nod afterwards. So, uh, and uh, I'm going to hate the vestry members out because of a baptism preparation uh, that I want to do, which will be brief as well. Uh, so, if you just are mindful of those uh, things as we come and go, I wish I could shake hands with you. Uh, I wish I could stand closer to you and all those things. It'll come. It'll come in due course. But let's just be mindful of one another. The last thing regarding uh, our, our COVID announcements. Please, when we're singing the hymns, do not bellow the hymns out. Do not sing with great gusto. Uh, I can actually mind if I don't hear you. The Lord God, our Heavenly Father, can hear you. All right? Have a mucker through the hymn. Have a mumble through the hymn. Uh, this time next year, we're roaring at you to sing up. Right, so nice and gentle, keep it down, uh, that's the request. On the very upside, big smile, I can't tell if you're smiling or not, we've actually uh, a, a larger number of people in church this morning. We're getting close to having to use the overspill in the hall, uh, haven't had to use it yet. But that's a good problem to have, and thank you for uh, giving it your all with regard to worship. So to our service, everything will appear up here. If you want to use your prayer book, I think the page numbers will come up as well. But everything will appear up here for you, for your participation. And as always, we commence with a sentence of scripture. And everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, if your request be known to God. We sing the hymn number 20, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.
Christ we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins, and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father, and sit for thee, and keep a moment of our reflective stillness. So with one voice we pray, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. God makes speed to save us. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, the Son, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to him be praised. Good night. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving, and cry out to him joyfully in songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Today, if only you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me, put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I looked that generation and said, It is a people who err in their hearts, for they do not know my ways, of whom I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it shall be forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 106. We read verses 1 to 6, then verses 19 to 23. Hallelujah! Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. Who can express the mighty acts of the Lord? Blessed are those who observe what is right. Remember me, O Lord, in the favor you bear for your people, that I may see the prosperity of your chosen and rejoice in the gladness of your people. We have sinned like our forebears. They made a calf of horror. They exchanged their glory. They forgot God, their Savior. Wonderful deeds in the land of Ham. So he would have destroyed them had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the breach. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Please be seated for our first reading, which is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, and beginning at verse 1. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge the Judea, and I urge St. Tichy, to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, 
for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and read the song of Isaiah together. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is time, and it shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated for our second reading, which is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 22, beginning at verse 1. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. When the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to the slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the canticle of Benedictus. Please stand. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through the holy prophets God promised the old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of those who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hand of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, Give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
These are challenging, challenging days indeed, and we hear that over and over again. Uh, I have to say to a friend yesterday, stop watching the news, it's bad for your head. Uh, because he was about five times in the last two days, he had posted stuff about what's going on in the south of Ireland where he's a rector. And their church has not been closed uh, for the incoming three week period. Uh, and it's affected him, and it's affected lots of people. And I said to him, and I've said to Anne as well, we've got to stop. We did, we did this during the lockdown. I, I would only watch news about every other day during the lockdown. And whatever way you place it, uh, you need to mind your headspace, as we call it. You have to mind what's going on in here. Yesterday was World Mental Health Day. I want to just address the practical issues of looking after our mental health at the present time. I do want to say that it is we live in a healthier time in that more people are prepared to say to one another, I'm struggling, or I'm feeling down, or I'm feeling anxious, or I'm having an anxiety episode. On the other hand, there are people who think there's something wrong with me because there's nothing wrong with me. All right, and that, I, what I, we don't want to do is start imagining stuff or feeling, what's wrong with me that I'm not going around to twist like everybody else? A friend of mine about 35 years ago, as part of his training for the ministry, got a placement, I don't know how he got this one, I don't like this one, got a placement with the Chicago Police Department, uh, chaplaincy, and uh, they had policemen who were involved in a shooting incident. And they were sent immediately to see a counsellor. And when they got to the chaplains, they said, it's almost as if they want us to be not right in the head. It's almost as if they want us to be struggling with us. And there is, of course, the bombs. We were all brought up by a generation of people who lived through the Second World War. And some of them had lived through two World Wars. I once took a funeral of a man who was shot in the leg in the first place. He was gassed in the First World War and shot in the leg in the Second World War. He lived and fought through both wars. And that generation were noted for not saying anything, for keeping it all in and showing the stiff upper lip, the straight back, and, and a, a resilience that's admirable. But perhaps they were overbalanced the other way. And we have cracked our bonds so far that we're all, I suppose, prepared to, to cry and wail and everything very readily. To some extent, I think there has to be a balance in the middle. I think we have to find resilience to push through situations. But we have to be prepared and we have to allow that our emotions, our mental health, is very real. Those things that get us down, those things that press in on us, are real. And just because there's nobody standing with a big knife trying to stick it in me doesn't mean I'm not scared. Or just because there's nobody running around with a big club trying to hit me over the head, that doesn't mean I'm not in a state of love or anxiety. And these things are firing off quite randomly in people at the moment. We had a random alarm went off in the rectory at one o'clock yesterday morning. It was the smoke alarm, which also set off the carbon monoxide alarm. Every hour for the next 12 hours. And the place you know, thought, you know, thought it was Star Trek. You know, thought there were aliens coming in at us from every direction. The alarm misfired until we got a bloke who knew what to do. Uh, and he said, there you go. And it stopped. And these sat for the next three or four hours looking at each other saying, is it really, is it really fixed? Is it all right? And just because an alarm goes off doesn't mean that it's not a real thing making a big noise and causing you upset. And I want to share testimony with you today. And testimony isn't just for somebody who stands at the front of a church and says, I used to smoke cigarettes and now I'm Jesus. All right? That's not a testimony. It might be somebody's testimony. But that's what we produce testimony to. Okay? Testimony is the ongoing life that we live in the Lord. And I'm going to testify to you today. I have massive spikes of anxiety in my head at the moment. I have these huge surges of feeling anxious and they're completely irrational. Well not completely irrational, there's a big nasty virus out there and, and the economy's going like this and there are problems and issues. But 
there's, it's disproportionate to where I'm sitting. I'm sitting in the armchair having a big spike of anxiety, you know, uh, and there's an irrationality to it. But I know myself well enough to be able to say to myself, and I'll say to be all right, I say, not particularly at the moment, I know that it will pass. It may take half the day, it may take half an hour, but I know it will pass, it will go. Uh, and things will calm down again. It can be followed in by a very sort of dark mood because when you have anxiety, your adrenaline shoots up and your body's in the flight or fight mode. For me, I want to run and get away, but there's nowhere to get away to. And that, uh, you know, contributes to it. And we're all feeling aspects of this, or many of us are feeling aspects of this at some level. And we we'll have these terribly anxious moments. I want you to know that you're not weird. You're not strange. Well, not weird or strange other than anybody sitting close to you uh, at the moment. You're not out on your own. You're not out on a limb. We all experience these things in different ways. And uh, there is a normality to it. If you feel threatened at some level, you will have a response inside you. And it can affect your mind and your heart and your head. I would say if it becomes consistent and overwhelming all day, every day, go and see your GP. Go and get some help. There are lots of people there today who can help us through this. And don't uh, allow us to sweep you away. And I say that with all sincerity, friends. A friend of mine, about a week before the lockdown, took his own life. A good friend of mine. And we'd have bonkered each other every day on Facebook. You know, we'd have given each other stick for years. I come up to his wedding back in 1995 and he would say to me, I've never forgiven what you did to me in Newtown Butler. And with this sort of bonker went back and forward all the time. And I didn't know where he was in his head. None of us knew. None of us knew what was happening in his head. So don't let yourself be swept away, literally swept away by it. Don't let that happen. You know, call, give me a ring, give somebody a ring. You get saying, look, I'm not coping with this at all. And there are people who can help you and get you through it. It is a dark and difficult time, and literally a dark and difficult time. I almost had a panic attack the other day. Do you know what caused it? Tesco's! I've got to put that there after. Tesco's frightened the minister. Okay, you know, come to Tesco's and be scared. We haven't been in Tesco's for six months. I've been shopping in Little and Hughes's and uh, locally in the village here. We haven't been in Tesco's for six months. And I was walking in Tesco's from a last month like this. And I haven't said to me on about three occasions, do you want to go outside and sit in the car? And that's where I want to say something about resilience. I said, no, I have to push through this. I have to push through this. It will pass. I need to. I need to go on through this. So she said to me, we haven't got any buttermilk, we forgot to get buttermilk. And I thought, well, that's great, because if Anne's buying buttermilk, it means she's going to make some bread. And I want something really nice. So I said, I won't get the buttermilk, I'll go back for it. And I went to it. I took myself to the loo, and the lovely hot water and soap, and we wandered around, and it passed. It went away. I felt a bit silly. I've been scared of being into the intestines, but I'd rather feel silly, you know, on the other side. Don't be afraid to own up to it. Don't be afraid to say to other people, I'm not feeling terribly well. But don't be afraid either to say, well, I know this is going to pass. I'm going to put my head down and keep going. There is a balance to be found. How do we root this? And this is just a self-help uh, thing for the record to stand at the front and bear us. So how do we root this in our faith? Particularly when we read in the writing of St. Paul, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I would say rejoice that your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Does that mean I'm wrong? That I'm bad? That I'm not obedient to God? And there is a school of thought that goes around in many of these sort of prosperity churches, these health and wealth preachers, that says, you know, you're wrong to feel.
feel bad. You're wrong to get depressed. You're wrong to feel alarmed. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus cried from the cross. If this cup can be taken away, let it be taken away, says the Lord. Okay, let it be taken away. I want this to go away, says Jesus, in the face of his crucifixion. He faces into it. And then with resilience he goes on. But if Jesus can feel alarmed, forsaken and broken, then we can as well. St. Paul didn't have everything go right for him. This week, the uh, past couple of weeks in the Bible study, we've been looking at the conversion of St. Paul. In terms of everyday life, St. Paul's life was measurably worse when he gave himself to Jesus. He ended up in prison. He ended up being beaten up. He ended up having people throw stones at him. He ended up being chased from town to town and city to city. He ended up being shipwrecked twice. I reckon it's a bit of misfortune if you're shipwrecked once. He was shipwrecked twice. He ended up being beheaded. And the measurable in the every day, things weren't going well for Paul. When he was writing this, things weren't going well for Paul. But he writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. The Lord is near. The Lord is near. And that's the key thought. The Lord is near. He is always near. He is never far from us. I was brought up in a school of Christian thought that said, If you can't find Jesus, it's your fault. If you don't, if Jesus is far from you, guess who moved? It must be you. Jesus is never far from you. I may feel desolate, yes. I may feel panic, certainly. I may feel black and dark from time to time. Absolutely. Where's the Lord? So Paul says, the Lord is near. The Muslims have a saying that God is closer to you than your eyelash. That's beautiful. He's closer to you than your skin. The Lord is as close to you as the air you breathe in and breathe out. The Lord is in you, with you, around you, above you, beneath you. The Lord is here. The Lord is near. And even if I don't know that he's holding me, he's holding me. Even if I'm panicking, He's holding me. Every child panicked about something. So it's all right, I'm here, but the legs are still going. Or the arms are still going. They're still panicking, but you're there. I taught my sons to swim. I taught them in the sea. He's a little better in the sea. And eventually all I was doing was touching their back with my finger as they floated on their back. And eventually I just took my hand away. I said, it's all right, you're safe, I'm here. You're all right, I'm here. Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of this world. Wild rest the sea, or all my life's wild rest the sea. Jesus came to the disciples across the storm and he said, Do not be afraid, it is me. He is here. He knows we will be fearful. He knows we'll have black moments. He knows we will panic. He knows we will feel alone. He's felt all those things himself. Rejoice in the Lord always. The Lord is near. Take that to our hearts today. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Will guard your hearts and minds. It's not like a drug that floods you. But he is our guardian and our security. Not only in eternity. But here and now, trust in the Lord always. He is near. Let us affirm our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles for me. As we speak together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. O Lord, save the Queen. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, may clean our hearts within us. This is the 18th Sunday after Trinity, the colic for the day. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith. God, forsaking what lies behind, may we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and in all things guide us to know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer together, giving thanks to God for his great goodness to us. We bless you, O Lord, this day, that in the dark places of life, in the places of great anguish and pain, in the moments of panic or deep sadness, or when we just feel that drift and loss, stormy sea of life. May we hear the word of your blessed Apostle St. Paul as he says, the Lord is near. May we hear the words of Jesus as the hymn writer wrote, I heard the voice of Jesus say, may we hear your voice, O Lord, as you speak into our heart and into our mind the depth of our soul and spirit. Do not be afraid. It is me. Peace. Be still. In a time when the world is ravaged with sickness and pandemic, in the advance of the winter nights, the sense of going back round to the same track again. The uncertainty with regard to what might happen next. We won't become accustomed to routines and patterns of life that have brought us a security that has now been taken away. May we find in you, O Lord, our security. May we hear the word of God I am your rock, I am your fortress, I am your strength, I am your keeper of your soul, I am God. We give thanks to you, O Lord, and we worship you. Send your Holy Spirit upon this congregation. Flood us with a sense of calm, a sense of knowing your presence. And knowing that that presence doesn't change when we walk from here, but that you go out the door and back to our homes with us. 
Be with our families and friends, especially those who we can't get to or see. Be with all those who feel isolated and alone and cut off. And today we come and we pray for those who grieve and mourn the loss of loved ones. And we remember that three years ago, across our parish group, we lost a number of people in a very short space of time. And those anniversaries are coming around now, or maybe have just been passed in recent days. We ask, Lord, for your continuing comfort and healing upon those who have lost loved ones. And those who have lost before that and since, and those who have lost loved ones in recent days. O oh Lord our God, give peace and healing and strength to your children who are in need and who cry to you now. Lord, save me. Do not be afraid, says the Lord, for I am with you. Hear the word of St. Paul the Apostle. The Lord is near. As close to us as the breath we inhale and breathe out. Strengthen your servants, O Lord. Reassure us. And may we know that you walk with us. We always pray and give thanks to God. We bless your holy name for all the goodness you poured into our lives. And above all, for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. I didn't consult on um, the choosing of this hymn. But here it is. What a friend we have in Jesus. Uh, we might not be able to roar it out, but let's sing it from the very roots of our being. What a friend we have in Jesus. Two 
Harvest Thanksgivings already in the parish group and there's one going on at the moment. So they're playing the fields and scattering for all the work out in Ballymire with Chris Brogle this morning. It's uh, Harvest Thanksgiving here next Sunday and we have served some morning prayer, normal service of morning prayer, but with prayers of thanksgiving for harvest collects and harvest hymns as well. So uh, that's something to, to look forward to and it's always good to rejoice before the Lord and give him thanks. It will also be a service of Holy Communion. We will break bread together on that service, which is the service of thanksgiving, of course. So, due to our protocols, this is what we have to do. Gifts of flowers and fruit and vegetables are most welcome. But because of the restrictions, floral flowers and fruit and baskets will need to be made at home. Okay, so if you can make your display at home and then roll it to the church so that hours and hours aren't spent in the church uh, in the normal way. The other churches were done very simply but very beautifully, so simplicity is the key word. Anyone wishing to provide decorations should advise the party secretary, you know, I knew that was Trevor, right? advise the party secretary at the end of the service. Displays will be placed in the church on Wednesday afternoon, so something that will last a few days. The church will be cool, uh, not cold, until uh, Sunday morning, okay? Uh, and everyone will be given a 30 minute time slot, so we need to know uh, that you're doing it, and you'll be given a 30 minute time slot to bring uh, your displays. It's very different uh, to our normal way of going, but isn't it all? in advance. I know the church will look splendid uh, and resplendent for next uh, Sunday. So once again, uh, if you can let Trevor know that uh, you're going to contribute and uh, select vestry members, please remain stay where you're sitting. Select vestry members will do it where you are. Okay, You'll be able to hear me from the front. All right. So sit, stay where you're sitting. Select vestry members. Uh, baptism the team, stay where you're sitting until I get to you, and everybody else, what was it, Andy Pandy, it's time to go home, where did that come from, it's time to Andy Pandy, you see, your record really is going mental, so there you go, go and face the love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ.